far as integrationists, no disrespect to, to the NAACP <laughs> or anything like that, but um, we do learn in uh, Race First that there were some disagreements between uh, Marcus Garvey and uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, who was a major figure in the NAACP. But there was a, a, a strict difference in approach. Um, it's almost like uh, before there was Malcolm and Martin, there was Garvey and Du Bois. Mm -hmm. there was, they, they may have had uh, similar goals, but the, their approach on how right. they did it was completely different. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was something that we had to work against. And number five is individuals inside the UNIA that were out for their own personal benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we still deal with today, um, and all organizations deal with it, but sabotage from within. Right. So uh, as we move forward, we try, uh, we're, we're trying to focus as a division on education and making sure that each of our individuals uh, has a, a, a uh, well-established knowledge of the events in the past and what we need to do as we move forward. Mm -hmm. So 1927, uh, Garvey's deportation. So we, we can talk about this uh, more when we get into the classes, but uh, there was a trial of Marcus Garvey. Um, I, was, I don't want to get the dates wrong. I want to say 25, but he was eventually deported in 27 um, for mail fraud. Um, they were saying that uh, he was trying to sell stocks uh, inappropriately through the mail. So that's something that we can talk about more in detail uh, in the study groups, but we do touch on it. We are aware of it. It's nothing that we're ashamed of. And finally, Marcus Garvey's transition. So Marcus Garvey, uh, after he was deported from the United States, he went back to Jamaica and tried to rebuild the UNIA. He had issues in Jamaica, and from my understanding, he wanted to go to Europe because he felt that um, uh, Europe was still in control of Jamaica. So he, he felt uh, Jamaica was a colony of Europe. Instead of dealing with the colony, why not deal with the, the primary individuals that are, that are making the policies for the colony? So that was, that was why he went to uh, England and uh, tried to build UNIA uh, in England, as far as I understand. Introduction to the UNIA ACL. Um, this is just a brief uh, snapshot of what the structure of the UNIA looks like. This is us here as, a, as an organization, as an executive body, UNIA ACL Division 421. The reason why we wanted to show this is uh, a lot of times when people come into the UNIA, they think that uh, Division 421 calls all the shots and we, we determine how everything goes, but there's a UNIA ACL parent body that is above us um, that gives us our direction and our directives. We try to work together, um, but we, we try to, uh, what we do, uh, work within the bylaws, work within the Constitution, work within the, the laws uh, and the, the, the rights that we are uh, given through the Constitution. But we just want to make sure everyone knows that we're not the final voice in what is said or done uh, here at Division 421. So the UNIA ACL parent body, just an introduction, a brief introduction of the, the parent body itself. We'll start with the uh, 11th President General, the current President General, uh, Michael R. Duncan <coughs> out of Queens, New York. Uh, first Assistant President General, Kamos Muhammad. He's out of Baltimore, Maryland. I guess I can say the division. Division 172, Division 432, I believe, is Queens. Assistant President General Raymond Duguay, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, he works closely with uh, Michael R. Duncan. So 431 and 432 are the divisions for Brooklyn and Queens, I believe. Assistant President General Shaka Barak out of Chicago, Illinois, Division 429. Is that correct, Rock? Yes, 429. Uh, fourth Assistant President General Sister Basima, Philadelphia, 121. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Yes. Secretary General Mary Bolta, Chicago, Illinois, Division 429. 429. Uh, Minister of Labor and Industries, Clyde Banks, Chicago, Illinois, Division 429. Uh, then you have UNIA ACL District Commissioners, commissioners all over the uh, districts. Um, actually, uh, Ross Marvin is the Commissioner for District 5, which is uh, Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida. Yes. Right. 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 Um, and then you have UNIA ACL Parent Body Committees. Uh, so this is just an introduction, but when we had this originally, we didn't have the, the, the locations. I wanted to add the locations for uh, everyone's understanding. Um, as I said in the previous slide, there is a parent body that, that gives us directions and directives. Uh, none of these individuals uh, are from the South. So in my opinion, we need more support 
from the south uh, to so that we can have a stronger voice right. as we move forward. I agree. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the United States, I believe there's 10 districts. And uh, at the UNIA page, you'll see a map. The UNIA page at the Collective Black People Movement website, you'll see a map of the United States districts. But there's districts that's outside the United States that is not considered part of the 10 districts in the United States. Let's take time real quick. And uh, the UNIA committees, uh, John had mentioned it, uh, there are several committees now that the parent body established. And we, as our division, uh, we need to be represented on those committees. So we need brothers and sisters from Atlanta to, to step up to volunteer to be on these parent body committees. One of the committees, as Brother John mentioned, is that the Constitution, our government Constitution, is being updated. So we need ears and eyes and mouth on that committee. Another committee, is uh, next year's election, they have an election committee that they set up. And we need to make sure that we're represented here in the South mm -hmm. on that election committee. And then another committee that's in existence right now is a constitutional committee who's updating the Constitution. Constitutional committee, election committee, and several other, but those are the ones, some important ones where important meetings and discussions are happening now as we speak. Uh, moving forward, we'll look at the President Generals of the UNI ACL government. So we use this to uh, show our lineage from Marcus Garvey. Um, nothing really to explain here, it just shows the, the years uh, that each of the President Generals serves, but we use this as a, uh, a tag of legitimacy uh, for our organization. And everybody has to know all the President Generals, from President General, the first one, Marcus Garvey, and the years they served. So this is part of our training. And in our orientation, we're just giving an overview. And as Brother John said, we're gonna go deeper in throughout the next year or two in each of these areas. Um, and this is the first slide that has uh, one of these, but keep an eye on that, cdpm.org uh, forward slash whatever. We'll talk about that uh, as, we, as we move forward. Just keep that in mind. Ross, it's your turn. <laughs> All right, my brother. Good job. Okay, uh, rebirth of the UNIA CL government. Uh, the UNIA had a fully functioning government, uh, according to Dr. Tony Martin research from 1920 to 1928. And what happened is that other leaders from, of other governments fought against the leader of our government, Marcus Garvey, to try to make sure that we as African people don't get united. Mm -hmm. So uh, after his deportation uh, in 1927, Marcus Garvey rearranged the UNIA in Jamaica instead of the UNIA of 1929 in Jamaica. Uh, our government went dormant for about 80 years, mm -hmm. up until 2006. Wow. So, and some of they say that some of the president generals on the previous side we were at president generals didn't even know that wasn't functioning or wasn't aware of our government status. Wow. And our government status was not realized until in 2006, uh, President General Redmond Battle, who's the eighth President General, the seventh President General for the government is Marcus Garvey's son, Marcus Garvey Jr. Right. And he, stayed, he served from 1992 up to 2004. And Redmond Battle served from 2004 and he passed away in 2007, so he wasn't able to finish his term. But the important thing what uh, President General Redmond Battle did is that he summoned Tony Martin, Dr. Tony Martin, along with Council General of the UNIA, Farouk Mohammed, to do the research to see if Marcus Garvey did have a full functioning government. And it was found out that our ancestors did have a functional, full functioning government. And I'm one of seven people in the country who was taught the legal uh, aspect of Garvey as part of the Legal Defense Committee underneath Council General Farouk Mohammed. And as part of the Legal Defense Committee, it's our job to know uh, the legal aspect of Garvey, Garvey from a legal perspective. A lot of us know Garvey, but did we know what international law Garvey and our ancestors used 
to establish the government, mm -hmm. and that's the law that every group of people on the face of the earth had the right to have their own government with their own leaders that look like them. Right. And our ancestors knew this. Marcus Garvey knew this. And that's why they can probably lock up Marcus Garvey and charge him some bogus charge as a mail fraud, fraud, but they can't lock him up for forming the government that's of right. the UN IDF. Right. That's our human rights. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the government laid dormant for 80 years, and in 2006, President General Redmond Battle asked Dr. Tony Martin and Farouk Mohammed to do the research, and they found evidence that the government was fully functioning for, oops, how did I get that? No, I was looking for the camera. <laughs> So, what did Council General Farouk Mohammed and Dr. Tony Martin, they found out that our government was in existence, and according to international law, local law, state law, when a law is in effect, that law holds forever, even if that law might be dormant, and they might not use it, as long as it's in the books, and as long as nobody did anything to dissolve that law, that law still exists. So our government was set, set up based upon international law, and even though it lay dormant for 80 years, we as our people and our ancestors never voted to dissolve the government. Mm. So therefore, we get a rebirth of the government now in uh, 2008, 2009, and in the rebirth of the government, on December 27th, they had the first Kuji Shalulia citizenship ceremony, and uh, December 27th was chosen because out of all the days in the year, that's the day that represents self-determination, Fuji Chagali, which means self-determination. Right. And Council General Farouk Mohammed said the highest form of self-determination is we as a people building in our own government. There's no higher form of self-determination. So on 2000, December, the first Fuji Chagali citizenship ceremony was December 27, 2009. It was in Washington, D.C., and then they had it again December 27, 2010 in Washington, D.C., but it just so happened that Council General, General Fulu Mohammed, one of my teachers, passed away on December 24th, 2010, three days before the second citizenship ceremony program. And from since 2010, <coughs> there hasn't been another citizenship ceremony for the UNIA government. And Farouk Mohammed, he was leading the legal effort as a lawyer to do all of this. But we have the responsibility. So what we did in Division 421, we hold, host our Kwanzaa event on December 27th and educate the community on the UNIA citizenship process and so on. Uh, Brother John, is, do I have the next screen or do you have the next screen? Okay. <coughs> We have our Kwanzaa program, thank you so much. Uh, we tried to get it on December 27th this year, but December 27th is a Friday. Mm -hmm. And we're having it at the DeKalb Mall African Museum. Am I right, Brother Papa? Sights and Sounds. Sights and Sounds. And it's gonna be December 28th. It's gonna be on a Saturday, and 2019, next month. And the time, Brother Papa? Four to seven p.m. we'll have our Kwanzaa program next month at the DeKalb Mall Sights and Sounds Museum. Six what? Six No. Oh yes, oh yes, Kwanzaa's happened all over. But we felt that this year, because from since we formed the division, we never had a program outside of Atlanta. We never had a program in Decatur. And we got at least 20% uh, of our membership is from Stone Mountain in Decatur. Mm -hmm. And they've been requesting for us, why don't we come to Decatur and Stone Mountain side of town? So this opportunity is our first opportunity now to have a program on that side of town. And right. it's overdue, and it's not gonna be the last. But uh, yes, that's why we're doing it in Decatur this year. Right. And definitely support all Kwanzaa programs, seven days of Kwanzaa. Can I just yes, you can. Um, the organization, uh, came to Trump three years ago when the governor passed away. Mm -hmm. So it be reactivated. So the goal is to make sure that we have funds in all these different areas so we'll follow what we our goal is, even though we're having all these this coming twenty eight. Um, but the goal is to 
make sure that people have to travel so far to get to a concert. So it's good to have one in the and good to have one in, in uh, Lincoln, you know. Exactly. Um, exactly. Um, so after the rebirth of the UNI ACL government, we're going to talk about uh, divisions. In the, in the height of the UNIA, there were over 1,000, 1,100 UNIA ACL divisions. Uh, these two pages, again, coming out of the book raised first by Dr. Tony Martin. The top one is uh, distributions of UNIA branches inside the United States and the distribution of UNIA branches outside the United States. Uh, in order to have a branch or division, well, in order to have a uh, branch as it was called back then, division currently, um, the United Constitution requires a minimum of 500 members. So each of these branches consisted of at least 500 members. Today, uh, there are less than 50 UNIA ACL divisions. So we have a responsibility to rebuild the UNIA uh, ACL today. And UNIA ACL Division 421 is one of these 50 divisions currently. This is just a uh, view of the what the UNIA ACL divisions look like in the 21st century. Uh, this is about 90% accurate. There are some divisions here that are not no longer functioning, and there are some functioning divisions that are not listed. Now we're moving to an introduction to Division 421. We'll talk about the founding of Division 421, uh, when it was founded, and why. We'll talk about the, the name of Division 421, which the official name is the Dr. Julius Nairi CBPM UNIA ACL Division 421. We'll talk about why that is why that is the name of the division. The jurisdiction of the division is Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we don't have a slide for that, but we just mentioned it. We'll talk about the officers. We'll give a brief uh, view of the officers. We'll talk about what we have done as a division, what we are doing today, and the division, the vision for what we plan to do tomorrow. Uh, and we'll end on members' involvement, how each of the members can get involved as we move forward. Ross, it's you again. <coughs> Thank you very much, Brother John. I can't see these controls. But uh, the founding of Division 421, which is the next slide. So this is this, this laser and the rest that's not. OK, good. Gotcha. OK, founding of Division 421. Uh, what happened, uh, the 10th President General of the UNIE, Senghor Jawar Baye, mm -hmm. uh, he contacted the CBPM on January 9, 2009. And the, collected, the CBPM, we're going to say a little bit about it so everybody understands the connection between the CBPM and UNIA. And he contacted us and he said that he likes what we're doing with the Collective Black People Movement. And we've been doing it uh, since 1995 here in Atlanta. And our name first, when we first started, was called the Culture Center. And it was done on Edgewood Avenue, if anybody remember, from 95 to 99. Mm -hmm. But what happened is that what, he called us on the January 9th, 09. And then on January 10th, he became an advisor. He said he signed up to be advisor of the Collective Black People Movement. And the CBPM stands for the Collective Black People Movement. And you got to notice that it's part of our name, uh, of our division. And the mission of the Collective Black People Movement is to gather, document, and organize the skills, talents, and intelligence of African people for the purpose of self-help and collective development. So that's what we've been doing with the CBPM from since 1995, and we're still doing it today. Uh, P.G. Senghor became an advisor to CBPM the next day, and then after that, P.G. Senghor asked us to form a UNIA division chapter in Atlanta in February the next month. And I told him, I, I'm fooled up. I have too, too much responsibility with the CBPM and everything else. And he said the same thing that we're doing with the CBPM is the same thing what the UNIA is about works for us as African people in gathering, documenting, and organizing our people. So he ended up talking me into being the president, and then he, uh, uh, he, he appointed me the president, because in the UNIA, the president of each division is selected by the president general, even though still they're voted in locally, but it has to be approved by the president general. And so when we form the local chapter of the UNIA, According to our Constitution, if you look at the Constitution, Article 1, Section Section 4, it says any place in the world where there's not a UNIA division, it just takes seven brothers and sisters to form a division. Yeah. And these are the seven brothers and sisters that came together to form our local chapter back in 2009 
Uh, member 602, Brother Bomani, he's the first member for our division. I'm CDPM member three, but I'm UNIA member two. I also, you can tell around what member number we was at with the collective black people movement when we formed the division. It was up to about in the 700s, 720, 730, when we formed the chapter. Currently today, the collective black people movement has 2,884 members. So all of those members was gained within the last 10 years. Uh, the third member, our third uh, founding member, was Sister Alona, uh, she's member three. Also Sister Lydia Daly, she's member number four. Brother Thompson, he's member number five, and he's from Tanzania. So that's in a way how we got our division name to be uh, Dr. Julius Nairi because he argued amongst us seven because we was all sitting down coming up with a name. And he said, we should take the name of the ancestor. When the division was formed, they take the name of two ancestors. And our division only have one ancestor's name, the collective, uh, Dr. Julius Nairi. And the other ancestor, it's not really ancestor, we took the organization name, the CBPM, because the division was formed out of the members of the CBPM. Everybody was a member except for Brother Thompson at that time, he was not a member of the CBPM. And our seventh mem sixth member was Brother Ross Eitel, if anybody knows Ross Eitel, I think he's in California now. And also Sister Faye, she was our seventh member, and now uh, she was in Montego Bay, Jamaica. She had to return back to Jamaica. So these are our seven founding members of our division, and everybody got a note, and it's in your package that we're having a note. So uh, next, we'll go to the next slide, and the next slide is the founding of Division 421. So P.G. Sangor selected myself to be president in 2009. Our first meeting that we had for the UNIA here in Atlanta was no, no, it's a it's a it's a oh, yeah. I think Brother Linford has got an extension for it. Is it long enough? Here's a, an outlet right here. We just want to make sure. Where? Outlet right here at the front. Okay. Oh, he was running on battery power. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Anyone who filled out the uh, yellow package this year? Please hand the board, Sister Felicia, if you could please collect this. This is just your registration for the training. So just turn that in and then you automatically register. Uh, fill out the blank sections. Make sure that you complete every line, please. Don't leave any lines blank, okay? Uh, okay, we got some more juice. So what happened, uh, our first meeting of the UNIA was March 31st, 2009 here in Atlanta. And on, in August, on August 1st, 2009, we received our official UNIA charter. Brother John had a picture of it here. That's our UNIA charter. And is it okay? Yeah, turn on the light. Well, can I pass it? Yeah, you can pass it around. And what this charter gives us as a, local, as a division here in Atlanta, it gives us the right to collect $3 a month dues from every African in our jurisdiction. Okay, that's the power of the division charter. So without the charter, we wouldn't be able to do that unless we was our official division. Uh, I was voted in president for the division uh, August 2009, and I've been the president since 2009. Anybody want to take my spot? Okay, so I'm like the president by default because nobody else wanted to be the president, but we're going to have elections, and if you look on the... Uh, 2020 uh, schedule, our elections is second, the fourth Sunday in January 2020. So definitely we, we need everybody to step up and take a position in the division. And you and I, Division 421, we started meeting at the CBPM office on Fairfield Street. And we was at that office up until last year, July 2008, 2018. We moved from the location in uh, Fairfield, and now we're over on Hamilton Road, 4211 Hamilton Road. We're in a much better office location. Uh, something happened there. Okay, the outlet wasn't turned on, so it's gonna come back again. But I didn't finish my slide, Brother John. Was you, uh, the slide was next was yours? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Hold on. Uh, 
I think it is like uh, when you switched it, I've seen the parent for the last time. Yes. Yeah. Six months. Okay. Yeah, juice? Yeah, power? Yeah, we have power. Okay. Just so everybody knows, brother, the department have brought some waters. If they might want some water, we got some waters in the back. It's a long presentation. I'll go ahead and pass the notes. Try to wrap it up in the next, by 5.30, we can uh, keep questions. Do you want to uh, pause the video? Charter, you want to see it? I ain't a chance to see it. No. Okay. You can Give us one second so we can power back. Okay, you got the extension cord. <laughs> take Dr. Julius Nairi as our division name. And because uh, we was doing the works of the CBPM, uh, we didn't know that we couldn't have the name CBPM, and we didn't know that we were supposed to take two ancestors' name. But President Reno Senghor Baye allowed us to have the name Dr. Julius Nairi, CBPM. CBPM is just a name. It's two separate organizations. It's not the same organization. And that's how we got the name CBPM, Dr. Nairi. Julius Nairi, CBPM. So we have one ancestor's name and then the name of the organization, CBPM. And the local chapter was formed out of the CBPM and other Garveyites was meeting with us from Atlanta, also helped form the chapter. Uh, 
So that's why our name is Dr. Julius Nairi, CDPM. Why our division number is 421? I didn't know this, but as new divisions form, a new division can take whichever three-digit number they want mm. to be their division name, but I wasn't aware of it, and we were assigned this division number 421 by President General, the 10th President General, Senghor Jawara Baye gave us this division number, so we didn't have nothing to do with it. And it just so happened that 421 has been running with us for a long time. That's seven. That's because seven. our post office box <laughs> is P.O. Box 421-69. Right. Our new office location is 421-142-11 Capleton Road. Yeah. So I guess 421 belongs to us because everything we do, it always starts over 421 from our mailing address to our office location, to our division number. And we will be going deeper into depth who Dr. Julius Nairi is. He was the first president of Tanzania. Uh, when Tanzania got its independence uh, back in the 60s. Yeah. And he's part of the uh, African leaders who came together to form the organization of African yeah. unity. Right. He was one of the uh, brothers representing Tanzania. And there is Dr. Julius Nairi. Uh, and still, and his, yes. And his party is still the same party. Okay, party that's in state. Tanzania. Right? And it's what did you say? It's, it's a political party. It's political political party. party. That's been running the country. And as far as I'm concerned, they're doing all right. Just uh -huh. one party. Uh -huh. See? Thank you, President Ross. Yeah. Uh, so that was the division and the name of the division, the wide division has the name that it has. Uh, here we just a brief picture of the executive officers of Division 421. Uh, these are the individuals that have stepped up to take responsibility of uh, one or multiple offices uh, in order to help us to continue to grow and make progress. What Division 421 has done in the past. So this is a question for new members uh, wondering, you know, 421 has been around since 2009. What have you guys done since you've been uh, in existence? So since 2010, we've been hosting Marcus Garvey Day Celebration. Uh, this is a free uh, event that we put on for the community, uh, fully funded by the organization uh, and, and only funded by the organization. Uh, we posted the 55th International Convention of UNI ACL in August of 2012. So that's all of the divisions throughout the nation uh, came to Atlanta in 2012 to celebrate uh, and to do work on the uh, 55th International Convention. John? Yes. If I may say, the 55th International Convention, it took 55 conventions for there to be a convention in Georgia. Uh -huh. There's never been a UNIA convention in Georgia until 2012, the 55th International Convention. So our division got the honors of hosting the first black government convention in the state and first and only convention. So we want to definitely bring the convention back to here again uh, within the next five, Sometimes 10 years. So. so we'll see how it goes. And it was a great one. That's what oh, I yes. was. You remember, okay. Uh, we've been attending the UNIA ACL Kuji Chagalias. Well, we did attend those in 2009 2010. Uh, at that time, five members of the UNIA uh, Division 421 received their citizenship. We sent a delegation to the UNIA ACL convention. Well, we continue to do that uh, since 2009. So that's the convention. Well, the High Executive Council is in March, uh, and then the convention is in August. But these are both events where uh, delegations are sent from all over the nation to discuss the issues in our, in our local communities. Um, we held the UNI ACL, held the UNI ACL Independence Day Parade in the West End of Atlanta on August 31st, 2012. So that was uh, in, conjunct in conjunction with the convention that year. One of the things of what we've done in the past, working with uh, the Atlanta Pan-African Coalition to host yearly African Liberation Day program. I you know how long we've been doing that. Uh, probably go five years though. Okay. Uh, hosting a yearly Kwanzaa program in Atlanta. Uh, that's something that we're trying to make an annual event. Uh, publishing the Whirlwind Magazine since 2012 with over 250 issues published. So we try to publish that uh, once a week. 
and we've attended the 100th year celebration of the founding of UNIACL in New York in 19, 2014. Uh, we've helped to build other UNIACL divisions, so 314, where's 314 at? St. Louis, but it's not functioning. St. Louis, 614, Columbus, Columbus Ohio. Columbus, Ohio, President Fred. 474, I don't know that one. 474 is President Johnny, Tennessee. Uh, Chattanooga. Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Tennessee. 213. 213, brothers and sisters, there's another official division here in Georgia, and that division is in Savannah, UNIA Division 213, underneath the leadership of President Lazarus. Is it active? Uh, it's active. But they're new, so they're still going through the ground pains. So they just formed like about three or years ago. I say like they not connected to like the, to the public of hearing and uh, getting on and thinking. They have functions there in Savannah, but uh, representing on the conventions in the HEC, I haven't seen too much representative from 213 to the uh, International events. You well, they need to grow faster. Mm -hmm. Everything needs to grow as well. Exactly. And the other division is Division 525, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale. Exactly. President Benton. Um, one of the other things that we're doing today, and I'll touch on in the next slide, is <clears throat> building unity with uh, African and Asiatic uh, organizations here in Atlanta, uh, which consists of the Nation of Islam, more Science Temple in Atlanta, which we have some represent representation here today. Uh, New Era, Atlanta, and the United Sabians, which we have representatives that had to step out. So, uh, Rasa, I had this slide, please forgive me, but <laughs> this is one of the things that I'm passionate about as we move forward is, is uh, promoting unity with other organizations. Um, so, uh, we feel that as we uh, talk to uh, the youth in the community, one of the things that they say is, uh, how can we expect the, the youth to come together if the, the adults and the leadership haven't come together. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to uh, form, come together, form some unity, and uh, be a, a model uh, of unity for other parts of the nation and, and, and our people uh, in other parts of the world. Sure. Um, this, I gotta give big credit to Brother Gerald X out of uh, Nation of Islam, Mosque 15B. He's been spearheading a lot of these, uh, these events but yeah, this is something that I'm very passionate about as we move forward, and I hope uh, other individuals can help us with as we move forward. Where Division 421 is today, uh, our main goal, our main priority uh, as an executive body is to build the 46 offices of, of Division 421. So as I had the slide of the executive officers, um, we're trying to build the offices. We want five to 10 individuals in each of the offices to help uh, the officers uh, with, with the works of that office. We have a goal of 500 active members by August 2020, so that'll be the 100 year uh, celebration of the founding of the government. We would like to have 500 active members, our plan is to have 500 active members uh, by August of next year. So, Issue so everybody, we're asking if everybody invites one person each month to join the UNIA, by August, we'll have that 500 members. So definitely invite your friend. We have applications up here. Is everybody inside here a member of the UNIA? Who's not, who haven't joined? Who has not joined? Because we have applications and so on. So yeah, definitely we want everybody to uh, be a member of the UNIA. Uh, but, uh, uh, in addition to being a member, we would like to we would like everyone to obtain a black government ID. If you don't have it yet, uh, we were we had it, we were doing uh, black government IDs for free up until uh, Marcus Garvey Day that just passed. Uh, 